I knew she was going to wake up. I couldn't be happier to bring this mainstay of the WWE roster, Baron Corbin, into the Not Sam studio. Baron Corbin's career has been rejuvenated since becoming a member of the NXT roster after all the years of wrecking superstars across Raw and SmackDown. A couple I'm in bears. a child's basement right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. This I is mean. ridiculous. A decent, this low price you watch. Don't have children as well. I got three cho or two children, one on the way. Yeah, they're asleep. <laughs> And you have this? Yeah. Your wife is awesome. Yeah. There couldn't be a more appropriate venue to talk to Baron Corbin about everything he's done in the WWE, everything that he wants to do, his lust for real competition, and everything you never knew about him. And that's why, here with us in the Not Sam studio, the man himself, Baron Corbin. That is me. That is me. It's great to have you here, man. You know, it's a little chilly here in New York, but mm -hmm. uh, you welcomed me in your home, allowed me to pet your dog, yeah, um, and showed me your adult basement that could pass as a child's room. That's right, but a very spoiled child. Super spoiled. Right. And like a meticulous child, like don't open the box, don't touch the toy kind of child. Right, right. Like I did appreciate that as you looked around, you were like... If you sold, you were at least aware enough yeah. that if you sold this stuff, you'd make a lot of cash. Fully aware of that. Yeah. And Zack Ryder, or he'd be your prime buyer. <laughs> yeah, I let's, hope so. Let's be real. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know if his pride would uh, would let him do it, though. No. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if he'd want to lower himself uh, to those standards. Well, welcome, man. I'm glad that you're here. It is interesting that uh, it feels cold for you because not only are you living in Florida, but you're not on the road that much no, anymore. No, I'm getting to enjoy some time at home and it's been awesome. Yeah. So you like, you've liked this reprieve. Yeah. I, I, you know, getting to be around my kids and my wife and uh, it, it's just been kind of a nice change. Getting to do some cooking and playing with other hobbies and, and you know, doing some other things. It's given me some free time to do that. Because, mm. you know, whereas if I'm on the road for three or four days, I get home. 100% of my attention is put on my kids, my wife, my family, and that. So now that I'm home essentially seven days a week because I'm just running up to Orlando, you know, uh, on Tuesdays, and then I drive home. Uh, it's given me a lot of free time to dive into some things I've been missing and, and whatnot. Yeah. How did, uh, how did your wife kind of deal with that, right? Like, I feel like if my wife started getting used to me not being here all the time— and then I was home seven days a week. She'd be like, you need to go away. You're standing yeah. on top of me. My she's, whole life was. She is uh, Puerto Rican. So yeah. she's a little spicy. Uh -huh. And I'm afraid she wants to fight me sometimes mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's when I just like go upstairs to the video games and, you know, video games. hide or go just do some dumb stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hang out with some buddies or whatnot. So I give her her space that she needs. But Smart. she likes to help. You know, it's, it's hard when you got two kids there running around. One of them is super sassy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we can tag team the, the four-year-old when we need to. <laughs> so she enjoys that. And then it just it allows her to relax. But because she's, you know, she runs a company, man. She She's a boss. And man. Uh, she lays it down. So she's not hanging out at home being a stay-at-home mom. She's putting in the hours and running a company. So Neither one of you guys really rest, huh? No. Yeah. Yeah. No Does rest it, for the weary. Is it tough, the transition over to NXT, was it tough to kind of allow yourself to reacclimate to the schedule? Because I would imagine that being a WWE main roster guy, especially in the various positions you had been in, you're go, go, go all the time, right? You're working multiple shows a week. You're also traveling multiple yeah. days a week. So you're maybe home for one day. The idea of multiple days a week now in a row, you might escaping for some video game time. You might be doing this over here. Was that kind of a difficult mental thing to go through at first? I think for the first couple of weeks, it was just nice. Like I yeah. just chilled, you know, it, it was nice to give my body a break. It was nice to sleep in my bed every night to cook food every day and not have to pack food for like five days or four days. And, and, uh, you know, my wife probably a couple of times was like, Hey, get your ass off the couch and, mm -hmm. you know, get on this list of chores you got or something like that. <laughs> but, uh, so the first two weeks I kind of just chilled and then I was like, all right, I got this time. And you know, you click right back into being busy. It's the same thing as like all the time when you're like, uh, 
on the road constantly go 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 and then you're off tv for like three weeks you start losing your mind you're like what am i doing what am i why am i not on tv da, 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 da. And like it's hard to click out of that mode for sure and so that's why i just keep myself busy with other things yeah i mean yeah whether it's jujitsu or starting yeah. a coffee company or what, yeah i mean like... i went and choked some people out i was like i was like funny with that too because i was like i can hide this and go do this tournament and i was like i'll be fine and then it was like on the dirt sheets within like an hour of being <laughs> done and i was like what the, how does how is that possible like you have leaks in your jujitsu class didn't, i didn't even you know put anything online or anything it was just like you know corbin wins gold at mma tournament and i was like oh man that got out fast yeah but uh yeah so i started training again you know i go train like three days a week uh i trained a lot before joining wwe and when i joined uh obviously i was starting at zero so i had a lot to learn here so i kind of put all my focus into becoming a wwe superstar and, and stopped training and then you know i went to the gym, gym where shana trains uh and shinsuke trains and because i knew it'd be safe nobody's trying to hurt you if, if those guys are there and they, they it's good because sometimes you walk into these gyms and i've been there before there was a gym in arizona i'll never forget when i was in there just training on a bag when i was playing football i was like 3 30 and this guy kept, hey man, you want to spar? We got a heavyweight, need some some work. You like you move a little bit. I was like, no, I'm good. I'm just training, doing some bag work. They're like, come on. They kept egging me, kept egging me. I was like, I don't have headgear, don't have a mouthpiece. I'm good. And then it kept going. I was like, finally, I was like, dude, uh, I asked the gym owner, you got headgear and mouthpiece? He's like, yeah. I go, all right, we'll do a little bit, man. But like, if you try to bang, we're gonna have problems. And then uh, he did that kid, and I was like, you gonna put headgear? He's like, no, I'm good. We're just gonna play. And sure enough, within 30 seconds, he was trying to kill me. And mm. so then I wrecked his entire eye socket. He 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 had to go to the hospital. Oh no! So I was like, but like you go to gyms all over, and that really happens, man. They they go, oh, he's a WWE superstar. He's in the NFL. Like they want to take a shot, right? In a, an and I'm sure you being a big guy too, absolutely. But they think they can take a shot, and like, oh, they, you know, they're not going to hurt me. We're in public eye or whatever. I cracked that dude's eye open. Bad. You did, yeah. He, the guy Scott that owned the gym said he never came back after that. Wow. But I doesn't like, it feel? What are you doing? But doesn't it feel kind of good too to know that like he started it absolutely. and left you without no choice? You were defending yourself. I gave yourself. him like five outs. Yes, five of them, and then and you then, destroyed his eye socket. Yeah. Yeah. That rules. It's kind of awesome. Yeah. So, but that happens to a lot of gyms. So you want to go to gyms where it's safe. You know, dudes aren't going to be trying to test you. And then, you know, I even knew that going to the tournament that I went to. I was like, oh, man, there might be a dude who knows. And sure enough, a few people did, but I don't think anybody in my division did. Uh, they you, they kind of gave me the weird look when people would come up. Hey, man, can I get a picture with you? They're like, what? who is this dude? But um, it was good competitors. And his blue belt, man, like, in my opinion, I can probably wreck 95 percent of the blue belts mm -hmm. in jujitsu in my weight class and most weight classes because i trained for a long time it just i switched gyms so it was hard to rank up belts like i feel like i could probably get in there and run with some some purple belts too so why why did you start training was it just something you were passionate about early free time or, man, yeah, yeah yeah like free time well and like when i originally started training i just you know i was boxing at the same time and then um you know UFC MMA was such a big thing. I was like, man, I need to learn to be on the ground if I ever want to go that route. Because I didn't know where, you know, my life was going at 25 years old playing in the NFL. I was like, how long is this going to last? I got, uh, you know, two options in my brain, which is WWE or or UFC to go fight. So I started learning some ground game, and uh, I kind of just fell in love with it. it. It's that's funny. My cousin does it, and he does no gi. I like gi. I like wearing the gi, and I'm like. He's like, let's get you a no gi. I'm like, no, I like chess, not checkers. Like to me, it's something that is a slow pace thing that you're trying to strangle somebody. Like it's a slow death that you're fighting in there, and you have to learn to stay calm if something's going on. Like, uh, you know, if you're get, getting caught in a, a loop choke or an arm bar or something, like you have to learn to kind of stay calm. And I think that helped me a ton in wrestling because you know if something goes wrong if the top rope breaks or if someone gets hurt or something like you learn if someone is literally trying to turn your lights out by choking you and you can stay calm you can kind of stay calm in any situation so i think that helped my wwe career very early on because i had the ability to stay calm especially when you're learning and you lose track of where you're at or whatever it is and uh you know a lot of people just go, okay, well, I'm going to go faster and just see what happens where I can kind of put the brakes on and, and think about where we are, process, and then figure out the best option. I've got to also imagine that it, it, it relates itself to most high-pressure situations. Like, 
a man trying to choke the life out of you is about as high pressure as a human being can get, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And then, and that's it too, man. Like, it, you know, you walk out in front of a hundred thousand people, thirty thousand people. Like, you've been in crazy situations, and and it just the ability to stay calm and it, it helps you with that for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 awesome. Did you have like? I mean, I would imagine that there's something in you that you love competition, yeah. right? And that goes to the NFL, that goes to jujitsu. And I've always wondered when guys like you come into WWE and there's more and more Division One, Division Two athletes that are coming into WWE that have that thing in them, that whatever yeah. elite athletes have this competitive thing in them that normal people like us just don't, we don't have it. How does that relate to professional wrestling where it's not traditional, let's say, competition? Well, I mean, for sure it's traditional competition because there's a bunch of guys, you know, fighting for the top spot. That's what That's we're what doing. Yeah. And, and, and um, you know, nobody's just really handed that spot. I mean, some people are handed opportunities, but nobody's handed that top spot. you got to fight for it. And, um, you know, some people – want the best for you and some do not that are in that locker room and i think uh you know having that competitive nature is a good thing it puts pressure on everybody to go and succeed and then the physicality of it we know how physical you know wwe is and what we put our bodies through and it, and it's not just in the ring but it's the training it's the diet uh you have to be dedicated in those things and i think when you just have that elite level uh mindset for collegiate sports professional sports for wwe it separates you from everybody else. You know, it's like my neighbor is not going to be a great WWE superstar. He doesn't have it in him to go and do the training, do the physicality, or someone slams him, you know, from the top rope on the mat. He's done. He's, he's going to limp home and he's going to cry. Like yeah. where I'm like, all right, what else can we do? You know, yeah. Um, you know, rub some dirt on it and keep going. Like that's yeah. kind of the philosophy sometimes. And, you know, I was a big salty old lineman. We're kind of just angry, grumpy people a lot. And, uh, to me, WWE allows me to kind of, you know, continue that vibe with what I do and, and you know, run people over, irritate fans, and mm -hmm. uh, just kind of take over situations by physicality. Is there any, did the fact that you have these other abilities that maybe WWE fans aren't even aware of, maybe early on ever bother you? Like when people are yelling, you suck, you lose a match, you suck. Do you ever want to just go, do you understand I destroyed a man's eye socket. Okay, like, do you understand what I'm capable of doing? <laughs> yeah, and it's funny, too, because people don't, like, I mean, I put up, like, a tiny clip from the jujitsu thing, just me, whatever, and it's at, like, 1.2 million views because people are like, whoa, I had no idea you did this. You're legit. Of and course. Like, I don't, when you are legit, you don't really care. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of it. Like, you know, it, it's funny because the people who have to go around and tell people they're tough usually are not tough. You right. know, it's like the same people who are like super rich. They don't go tell you how much money they have. Like, right. it, they just have it. And I think there's a, you know, there's a few people in our locker room that just have it, that are just legit tough dudes and they mm -hmm. don't have to tell you. And then, you know, you can see right through the guys. And in, in my opinion, you can see right through the guys that, that are not real tough. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they like to take advantage of situations or you're like, you know, they hit you real hard and, you know, they think they're, they're tough for that. And you're like, dude, I'm giving you my body. Like it doesn't make you tough. I'm allowing um, this to happen. Yeah, because if if I wanted to change this situation, I could very quickly. Um, so I think, you know, having that background and winning the Golden Gloves, like you know, I fought in the gloves, and this dude, um, I was fighting the National Gloves in in Detroit. We were in Flint, or it was Grand Rapids, is where the the tournament was, and at weigh-ins, this dude was threatening him. he took off his shirt and he had like a gun tattooed on his stomach and he's like yo i kill people dude i beat the brakes off that dude <laughs> like i hit him with a stiff jab in the first round and he ran for the rest of the fight and it, but like i knew it as soon as he started running his mouth like right. real recognizes real like there's a there's a nod that you give each other when you go hey man it's gonna be a war okay cool let's go um and and guys who are just running their mouth or it or the fans or the internet or whatever it is like you know dude you can't beat that you're a joke you know it's like okay okay man ouch you really hurt me like <laughs> right. you're not you can't hurt me dude right like, you can't hurt my feelings because i know what i'm capable of um do we get frustrated and want to you know do i want to become world champion obviously so like that's the internal struggle what do i need to do to become world champion here i don't care what the the people on twitter are saying mm -hmm. it's like 
for me. You know, I want to carry the world title. Like, you know, do I think I can run with Seth Rollins, take him down, take the title? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's what I want to do. So how to? I think for uh, for people like me, it's the internal struggle of how do I become number one. How? Uh, what does it feel like to be at the point where you're at now? Right, where like you said, you come in a novice at professional wrestling, yeah. and that's how. And then you go through the NXT system and become this WWE superstar, right? But I think it's really interesting to me that that's where you started in NXT and now you're back in NXT yeah. with this level of expertise. Like, do you reflect on the fact that like the last, like it, you're in the performance center every week, right? Absolutely. The last time I was in this building for an extended period of time, it's when we're watching the reality show, right? Where you yeah. guys are all just trying to figure out what this system even looks like. Yeah. Like you're the first class of, of, yeah what this even I'm looks an OG, like yeah and now you're back to be like okay you we need some grizzled vets for these young kids to work with absolutely and like uh you know we had that too like a little bit when i was coming up my first match was was tyson kid right like could you ask for a better person to be in the ring with right. absolutely not right. and it was funny because he's like what can you do i was like bro i can hit you with the tackle like <laughs> that's all i really know at this point i haven't been here long um and we put together a great little match for tv and mm -hmm. it was super simple and um, you know, for me to go out and be in a ring with a guy like that, who I think is one of the best that's ever stepped through the ropes, you know, uh, and he has one of the greatest minds for this industry that you'll ever come across when, you know, ever I have a question about a match or something, I'm going to go pick his brain because what he comes up with and what he sees is amazing. But, um, I think it's cool to go back. I, I think that, you know, I had the opportunity and I didn't think it was going to last as long as it did. Like it was kind of, Hey, come down. We want you to work with uh the champ and do a quick little program then you know we'll get you back up and running and I, and I got there and i started talking to sean and russo and baldo and terry and i'm going man like if we're going to kind of fix my path mm. and get me back on track to a place i want to go it needs to be done here and so you know i had a long talk with them and they grabbed onto it they were like absolutely and sean which, which asked, by the way is on it i think i feel like it's riskier especially at that time right because nxt has only gotten bigger and bigger and bigger over the last several months like yeah. you, there's a clear growth in that brand absolutely but it's also a risky thing for you to kind of take yourself out of the raw and smackdown conversation and go no, no like we have to let the growth happen here yes right for sure because you're like Man, you know how quick this business moves. Hundred like, percent. You're like, I don't want them to forget about me. And then you go, Well, if I'm doing something real kick ass, it's gonna be impossible for them to So you're betting on yourself a little bit. Like mm -hmm. that's where I was talking to Sean and Russo and I'm like, Hey man, like how do we fix this? And he texts Hunter and Hunter's like, Yeah, do it, man. Go. And then we've been I feel like we've been rocking and I feel like I'm doing the best stuff I've done my whole career right mm -hmm. now. You know, the promo with Ilya on, on Tuesday uh, to me was just, I was felt great. like I was spitting fire. Like I felt every second of that. And it was such a good feeling. And like having those guys back me. And then also what's awesome about being there right now is when I give them ideas, they run with it. Like yeah. whether it's a video package or an entrance or the song or how I carry yourself or what I'm wearing to the ring. Like I'm picking what I want to wear and I, I'm wearing my gear and I'm doing all that. Like, it's a cool, motivating feeling, and it has relit this fire in me that, you know, that I needed, and I think it was the best thing for me. Yeah, I think uh, the Ilya promo that you mentioned was so good for me as a fan watching and this kind of watched everything because it was one of the very few times I can remember that Ilya is now in a position where he's got real vulnerability. Yes. Right? Like absolutely. the emotional, that's a guy who has, who's been stone cold for lack of a better yeah. term. That's what his whole appeal is. That's yeah, why he's so absolutely. fun to watch. And yeah. it's like the idea that like, and of course, who is a big enough asshole to tap into that absolutely. vulnerability and go there? Yeah. Baron Corbin, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm going to pick at it for sure. Like I'm going to push you and, 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 it's one of those things too, like because I have a different mindset. My mindset has drastically changed over the last four months of being there in so many different ways. In in the ways that I look at the main roster, in the way that I look at myself, my career, my character, and what I'm doing in the ring. And, and uh, you know, it was kind of that philosophy of like Ilya's the man. There's no if ands or buts about that. He is a future world champion in my eyes. He is one of the best in ring performers. He's a great on the mic. He looks great. Uh, he has a charisma that's awesome, and I go, you know what? I'm going to put him to the test, and he's either going to hang or he's going to get run over. Like that's kind of the new philosophy: is I'm going to be 
in a sense, more selfish for my things because I've spent years doing everything I can to help other people. Like, you know, how can I get this dude to the next level? How can I make him the best, uh, you know, main event star to watch him go and perform at SummerSlam? Like, there was a turning point a few times in the career where, you know, like I'm running with Seth Rollins for six, seven months. We're putting out awesome stuff, and then he goes on to face Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam, and I'm sitting in a hotel room in Toronto. Like, mm -hmm. that hurt, dude. That yeah. legitimately hurt. And so um, I still was like, hey, best for business. Like, I get what I'm doing. Like, I'm doing a great job building, dude, so let's keep doing that. But now it's like, man, I'm getting, you know, hopefully in a point where I've got, you know, a few four or five good years left of rocking and rolling. Um, and so I want to maximize them. So if I have to be a little more, more selfish, I will. And so that was kind of part of that promo was I was going to test deal you and say, man, you want to do this? Let's go. And you're either going to get run over like i said or you're gonna hang and people are gonna be like damn that was good and i think that's the response it got yeah I, I i that was definitely my take on it have you ever seen the movie the prestige yeah so like to me what you just described which i think is a really crucial part about being kind of a perpetual top villain where it's like your job is to m bring those top good guys to a place where they can have their giant match against Absolutely. the brock lesnar's of the world but you become the guy under the stage. Yeah. Right? For sure. You remember Absol that scene? You're the Dude. guy under the stage. Didn't even think about that. That is That's listening to the ovation. It. Absolutely it. Yeah. You know, because I've built dudes and then they go on to SummerSlam and they go on to WrestleMania. Yeah. And, I've, and I don't get me wrong, I've had some great WrestleMania matches sure. from, from the Kurt to the Drew to, you know, Ambrose to my second WrestleMania and all that stuff. Like, you know, I've had some great stuff, but. But I want to be the guy that that is standing tall at the end. Or, but like I said, you know, and I was left off. And what not mania this year? Like, dude, that stings. Like, you know, the same one. You know, when we first came back from COVID, that one in in mm -hmm. Tampa, I had built some guys, and then I didn't get, you know, that. And like, so you feel like, uh, I mean, that the guy under the stage that mm -hmm. that's putting in and grinding and doing the work and taking the falls and eating the shit from social media, all of those things. Um, you know that that guys in my position are doing and now you're not getting the big payoff and so i think you know that's my motivation now it's like i want that i want that spot and i think people want that for me it's the weirdest time in my career when my social media is not all people just hammering me like you know especially like running that the ple with braun like dude mm -hmm. i'm getting cheered same thing with the other one with gable like massive cheers like the france you know the the standing ovation in france is something i'll never forget in my entire life yeah I, yeah yeah now yeah. i see we're seeing like a ple there i'm like dude i need to be there. like how do i i need to be beating up cody rhodes or somebody of that status at that pay-per-view because those people are going to lose their minds i was yeah. like i think i have to move here after that like, <laughs> yeah, i was like yeah. i'm now gonna move to paris and i mean at least the food is amazing but the people like dude that was like i legit when the bell rang and they kept chanting and cheering i had to like step back for a minute because i was like dude this is like full chills it's crazy so i'm like if this i think people want to see that success for me as well because they same as miz like miz has paid these dues forever yes. but then you look at his resume and it, he's a two-time grand slam champion i'm going nope nope buddy it's my turn <laughs> 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 you've got enough <laughs> yeah i think there's two levels to that which is one level is there are those of us that have been watching the whole time right and we've yeah. seen this journey for guys like you that it's like, okay, it's time to appreciate the whole body of work. But I think it's also because I don't remember a time in the last, I don't know, maybe since the Attitude Era, where there have been this many new fans of the product yeah. where I'm interacting with new fans. But I think what you find is that what we don't see who have been watching the whole time is that you guys who have been going day in, day out, year after year after year after year have gotten this polish on you. Right, yeah, where sure. it's like you're performing at this level that can only come with a certain amount of experience, and I think that that all those things combined uh, result in that audience. So the 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 reaction in France you were talking about was that live event, yeah, where I think it was like your first victory in God knows how long. With that, and that to me was like, which was changed two minutes before it happened, for no reason in particular, or I mean, because they just love me. Really? That, yeah. I mean, it was crazy. That so you mean crazy. it had, it was changed mid-match? Yeah. Wow. That's wild, right? That's wild. I was like, the ref said something. I was like, you, you're drunk. What are you talking about? 
<laughs> I don't win matches anymore. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know if they told you this. I stopped yeah. that a long time ago. Yeah, it was funny. So like broke a streak or something. But yeah, dude, that, I mean that place was electric. It was Why crazy. do you? So so they just loved you because I thought that they reacted just to this moment that for some reason they all realized that you hadn't won a match in so long. Dude. But they were on you. They were with it you was from, from the beginning. The mute with the second my music hit and I walked out, I was like, "What is that?" And like Bailey said it like people came running from the locker room like, "What was that pop for?" And they're like, "Corbin, what? <laughs> I gotta go out and see this." Like, and then poor Boogs when he came out, they just booed him. Like, who boos Rick Boogs? You couldn't. Like, they did. Wow. Um, you know, I was stomping on them in the corner and they're chanting one more time. I'm like, "Oh, buddy, I'm this is bad for you." Uh, great for me. <laughs> um, you know, it was funny because I was talking to a, a guy before the show who who has a YouTube out there, a YouTube show out there, and apparently it's a massive wrestling podcast. And he was such an awesome dude. And we chatted food and we chatted wrestling. And and he was talking about how he loved the Lone Wolf. And he was just playing. He's like, I haven't seen you wear shorts. I was like, dude, I'll wear shorts tonight. And like, I did wear shorts that night, which was so <laughs> random. Like, I was like, I'm just going to wear shorts because this, this guy told me to. And it's awesome. And I had fun with him. And he was like, dude, don't be surprised if you get cheered tonight because we've been talking on the radio show on his podcast on YouTube about how I feel you're one of the most underappreciated superstars and that, um, you know, the people of France should show their appreciation for you. And, dude, they did. That's wild, man. So, like, I'm, I attribute all the thanks to him because, you know, he's spreading the word. But he's like, dude, you're super talented. Everything you've done, appreciate it. And, like. Uh, it was crazy, man. Chills, yeah. chills. Yeah. Well, I mean, luckily you got one of those finishers where it's like, if you get that note I, in your ear. I got ear, one with a schoolboy, which has beat me like 12,000 times. Is that how you won yeah. that match? Yeah, dude. Roll up. Got him. Uh, and then, dude, all the people like rushed. Yeah, I saw crazy. that. I saw the end. But like since then, man, I've been getting these wild, awesome reactions. And the people in the, you know, the NXT is the same audience every week. The same people come. Yep. And they're awesome for that, dude, yep. because they come and they enjoy it and they have fun. And it was cool because, like, that promo with Ilya, like, they were genuinely listening. Yeah, it's almost like, uh, for lack of a better comparison, like, ECW arena fans, not in the sense that they're nuts, but in the sense that they weren't going to every show just because it was something to do and they'll take over the show and yeah. whatever. Like, they're going every single week because they're genuinely yeah. invested in the show and it's almost like i remember being there when they were doing premium live events also in the performance center and there was this vibe of like the people that were there were the same people that watched this story yeah. build and got to see this payoff and it was like i mean the the reactions got got so big there because of yeah, that audience absolutely the, the audience is great dude they're, they're yeah. always there when you need them and then like I said, it was just it was a cool feeling that that day, but just because they were like listening. Someone was like, "Oh man, the crowd was quiet." I was like, "Bro, if you're watching like an epic part of a movie, you're not talking. Mm -hmm. You're watching and mm -hmm. you're listening." And that's where we had them. So I was like, "We got these people. Like this is awesome." Um, and this is awesome. There we go. <laughs> well done. Um, <laughs> but you know, and, and I think they're invested in this match uh, tomorrow night. They are. It's going to be, so. and you know, we're we're gonna hopefully tear the roof off this building there's going to be some sweet matches on that card and i think nxt's putting out fire man like yeah what sean and and baldo and all those coaches there and russo are like what they're doing is special because they're listening to talent they're they're getting behind them like how do you want to make this work how do you feel about this because then people are truly invested for themselves and then there's some guys like you know there's different people on that roster too that that really want to be successful and want to learn and want to listen so when someone like me or you know if seth comes in the building or becky like they're asking questions you know randy was there training getting better when taker was there like people are asking genuine questions and then there's some guys you know when you're getting these athletes from all over from college they're high profile athletes they might come in and think they already have it made and i've met a few of those where you know they ask you a question and you can tell they don't care about the answer or what you're saying they're going to do it their way they're just trying to play the game but i've been around too long to know that mm -hmm. and i'm not stupid mm -hmm. and so like if that person like you know there's been a few times like even i even got asked you know paul's like hey man we need uh somebody for the live event in orlando would you mind coming up and i was like i'll be in orlando that day anyway i'll absolutely do it and like we put together a, a match just for the live event in orlando and one of the guys i was like dude it's not gonna work trust me been around the block know what i'm doing like kind of and he's like no it'll work it'll work and dude, it was trash <laughs> and then you know they come back and they go dude that was freaking awesome i was like <laughs> i was like what 
what match were you watching and what were you in? Uh -huh. Like I told you it wasn't going to work. And so like there are some people that are going to learn the hard way there. And I think that's fun like, yeah. for a guy like to me to go, okay. Right, like, right. Oh. I'm I'm good enough. We're we're going to I'm going to show you. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's a different pace too. Like you get to work, you know, working with Melo, like he's unbelievable. Yes. Braun is unbelievable. And they, you know, I think they're appreciative because they go, "Oh man, that that is such a different feeling." being in the ring with you like the emotion is different the speed is different the physicality is different it's not just throwing things at the wall to see what'll stick it, it's like hey man I, i've got a path i can take us on and it'll be awesome and they get done like dude kind of goes back just, to that chess thing right like we it, know with like if we do this it's not to do this it's because it will lead to that yeah which puts us here which allows us to do this yeah and like yeah. but even in training like when i was going up there i just wanted to get my cardio up i was trying to drop a few lbs so I was going up there on like a Wednesday and just training with like Fitz class because Fit will run you to death. And like AJ was there training at the time. And like you can see, and, and Fit pointed it out, like you can see a distinct difference in the way I work, the way AJ works with, and then the people there work. And he's like, mm. it's just a different emotion and pace. And like, so it's cool for them to learn that because, you know, hopefully a lot of these guys will transition to the main roster and carry this business for the next 15 or 20 years. And so to get that opportunity now, like I said, when I worked with Tyson, like that was massive. You yeah. Know, then I got to work with Rhino and like a lot of people with a lot of skill. And, you know, I was doing like loops with the Usos here and there way back when. And, and you learn from those guys. And if you learn from them, it's going to take you a long ways. Yeah. Were you, uh, were you surprised at the reactions that you got with Gable Stevenson? Like the fact that, you know, I mean, that, that, match was was kind of i built to showcase him as a hero and you as the villain and i mean <laughs> you learn the hard way real quick that like that doesn't always sometimes pan out. you have a gut feeling and i had a bit of a gut feeling mm -hmm. on that one that it was going to be a little flipped and um i felt that what what we did worked for that still um and he's got an uphill battle man when you have a, a pedigree of a gold medal it's like anybody who comes up and thinks they're going to be the next Rey Mysterio. No, mm -hmm. it's not going to happen. Sorry. There will never be another Rey Mysterio. I don't care who you are or where you come from. It's the same as Kurt Angle. So if you want to compare yourself and talk about the gold medal and do all of that, you're never going to live up to the bar in front of you because no one is going to be better than Kurt Angle at what he did. No one. He's one of the best in the history of this business. That's right. And so... In my opinion, he should try to find something that is not just like that. You know, I get he looks up to him in that, but dude, you got to separate yourself, make yourself different. Don't make people compare you to them because that is going to be a hard, tough road. You know, Charlotte's done that. You know, Charlotte did not want to be compared to her dad, so she found her own path, mm -hmm. and now she can intertwine the two a little, and she can do things that her dad did and do her thing. Like, and that makes her the star that she is but she created her own path first i think he needs to do the same because like you know he went for an ankle lock and the crowd was chanting you're not angle like i was like Ooh, bro. Oof, ooh, ouch <sighs> um but you know so i kind of half expected it just because you see it on social too like you know you're gonna get social media as a small percentage of our audience but they sometimes have a beat on what is happening with something so i you know i i wasn't shocked but I said, man, maybe it could go this way. Mm -hmm. like I was optimi optimistic, but it yeah. obviously... Uh, it went the way you thought it was going to go. Yeah. Shocker. Yeah. Shocker. The I mean, boy was getting cheered. And... <laughs> yeah, you were. Such a weird world we live in right now. Baron Corbin gets cheers. It's. I didn't think... I didn't, I didn't expect it. I secretly love it right now, too. Uh, of course. You have to. Yeah. But Just like, because it's like... It's going against what's supposed to be happening. Right. Like sometimes I want that anarchy, that mayhem, that that. What do madness. we do with this? Yeah. 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 And like, and it could put you know what, man. Like, if people start loving what I do and really get behind it, man, I you know I could be the next guy to go against Roman Reigns. You, you know, because he needs a guy like that, or you know, it'd be a fun switch. The last time I worked with Roman, you know, it, I was his. Mean it. I was pouring dog food on, you know. It, <laughs> yeah, that's a rough time. Yeah. Not a fun time for him. <laughs> yeah. I also almost vomited with the dog food. <laughs> um, but it would be a flip. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's yeah. killing it right now. And But if, if people get behind me and it would just be, it would almost feel, and here's what I think it, I like it is it's fresh. 
Mm -hmm. It feels new. Mm -hmm. When they're behind me, it's like, dude, it's not the same person you saw. Like, cause when we were doing the bum ass Corbin, sad Corbin stuff, man, they were starting to turn and feel bad for me, genuinely. But now they're, it's like they're excited for me. Yeah. And well, I think that that also happens when you can see clearly that he's doing this thing well. I think the part of the, yeah bum ass thing starting to you know get dangerously close to getting cheered yeah because it was fun yes and you put your entire self into this over the top character where it's like i'm having a good time every time this guy comes out nobody else can do that specific thing and once you see that playing itself out you're like i can't what am I going to pretend I'm not enjoying this? Yeah. You know, yeah, dude, asking for 200 grand from the audience. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> and, it, and I think, and I did, I bought, I mean, everything I've done, I've put 110% into. Yes. Like, I don't know any other way. I just don't. I've never had the ability to, to half ass something, if you will. Like I am in all the way. And it, that's been every character I've done from lone wolf to constable, to King, to, to bum ass, to happy. Like, if we're going, let's go. And I think that, you know, when they were asking me, like, where do you want to take the, what you're doing now? I said, dude, I just want to be me. Mm-hmm. Like, let me be me, dude. Like, I'm just a dude. I like rock and roll music. I like cigars. I like bourbon. I like fighting. I like martial arts. I like action horror movies. I like, you know, coffee. Like, whatever it is, dude. Like, I like a lot of things. Like, let me just go and be me. And I think people are now seeing that that's relatable. And, like, yeah. but I'm putting real things in, like, real life feelings of you know like i said in the promo man like whether they'll ever admit it or not they have to know that i've never stopped like dude from everything like during COVID, i was the guy yeah i was pulling eight segs on raw one time like and i'm on smackdown you know it's like (laughs) that show when everybody was out like it was me and jeff hardy and i was talking smack on taker like there were times and i'm doing both shows i'd go over to work you know drew when he was a champion but then i'm working smackdown i'm working elias i'm working like I've been a guy that has been that that Swiss Army knife, that pocket tool that they can plug in any situation, and I'm going to give you good quality stuff. And so now it's refreshing to go, hey, I can take all these tools I have, all these things I've learned, all of the times where like I've hit panic button, hey, you have a three-page promo to open Raw as the constable, and people are just screaming at you the whole time, and you're cutting a great promo. Like I've taken all these, and I'm going, dude, I'm just going to do me now and and – nxt and and hunter and they're behind it man so that it's refreshing it feels good it's awesome when do you feel like it clicked for you right like like you said like you you first match tj's there you can't do anything when do you feel like it clicked to the point where you were like okay not the first time you were like i feel comfortable but when you were like no i really i got it now so at very one one distinct day couldn't tell you the day couldn't tell you what it was but I took an ass whooping for 45 minutes straight from Norman Smiley, Mm -hmm. from Billy Gunn, from Bill DeMont. Um, I think Buddy Murphy was in there. Uh, Maybe Dash and Dave were in it. Uh, And they beat me up for like 45 minutes. And like I was so tired and exhausted and it just one time billy hit me with a right hand and it just clicked and i was like i understand this (laughs) like it was super weird it was like an angelical moment yes but i was so tired and i was like man i'm just overthinking everything this is easy just go with the flow a little bit like and it kind of took all of that stress, the anxiety of wanting to, you know, get this as fast as I can or be the best as, as fast as I can. So I was like, you know, like, it's, I don't know, whenever you're at the absolute bottom, you see the path or whatever it is. And that was kind of it. it was mm-hmm. Super weird. But I had like four coaches beating me up and, you know, a couple of the guys beating me up and they were just going in and out on me for 45 minutes in a tag. Like, but I was by myself first, like eight people. <laughs> And it was, and I had zero offense, and they just, they put it on me, and it was that moment where I was like, ah. So the punch in the face, instead of knocking your lights out, turn the light bulb on. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, and it did, and it was, you know, like someone was telling me this quote. I think at a coffee shop yesterday, um, that we were grading some of my coffee, uh, you know, 
It's like you said, I started a coffee brand. Yeah, it rules. No big deal. Open air coffee, baby. Ooh. Um, so I was there just chatting with him, and he's like, "This guy said the the biggest lie ever told is it's not that easy." And like, what do you mean it's not that easy? No, that's the biggest lie. It's not that easy. And it's like he is. It is that easy if you can just step back and look at it. And yeah. I think that was that moment when yeah. I was like, ah, because some people I see a lot of people come through these doors and they they overanalyze, over critique, over everything and then you can see it because then they're robotic or they've memorized words or whatever it is like just kick back and do it man like i think that's that was the time it clicked in the pc and i think that's when i really kind of started to run and i struggled in promos in the beginning like it was hard like because i've been in a, a world of football boxing where when you do an interview or you're in a game and you're tired you're beat up, you don't want to show anybody that you, right. you want zero emotion like again we're going to use stone cold again like you that's what you are you're not hurt you're not tired now i'm coming into a world where i have to convey all of these emotions to millions of people and that was a hard transition a little bit and especially when like they weren't my words you know dusty would give me things to say and it was hard to connect sometimes and after that dude it, everything just kind of clicked when you like you said we're we're having this conversation less than 24 hours technically before your match with Ilya. Yeah. Like a match like that with that dude, do you get excited because it takes you back to like you're gonna go to war? Because like professional wrestling or not professional wrestling, you've gotta know. Yeah. You're main eventing a PLE with Ilya. Like you guys are going to kick the you know what Absolutely. out of each other. It's going to happen. Yeah. Is this something how do you how does one kind of wrapped their head around the fact that no 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 there's going to be a beating tomorrow it's going to go both ways yeah I but i'm going to feel it we go back to i've got some screws loose man. yeah like i think it's i'm excited because i know <laughs> the physicality is going to be off the charts when he laces me across the chest and he hits people harder than most yeah. it's going to fire me up and mm. like i think it's it is. It's that thought tom that tomorrow in less than 24 hours, I'm going to war with this dude. And we're going to tell a hell of a story at that. But we are going to beat the brakes off each other. And I think um, when you have a match like that, I, I get excited. Where, you know, when I'm going in there with Carmelo or Seth Rollins or, or Cody Rhodes or whatever, it's a different excitement. Like, I know because it's a different style but tomorrow is the same when i was in there with braun like mm -hmm. i knew that you better grit your teeth because it's coming like you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like it, it's that was one of those and that, that makes me excited like i mean that's why i go fight in a jujitsu tournament like man i gotta sometimes i gotta just feel somebody trying to to knock my teeth out like right. there's something about it and then um if you can't get excited for that like dude you're in the wrong world like you see in boxing and football and you see dudes that are scared and you're like, I don't know what you're doing here, man. Mm -hmm. This isn't for you. This is what's if this is happening. Yeah. yeah. It's not for the you know, I got told one time I jumped off sides at football practice and a guy named Mike Candy was a right tackle for the Arizona Cardinals. He just looked at me and shook his head and he just goes, This job's not for everybody. <laughs> and I was like, You son of a <laughs> like he burned me. And I'd only been there like a week. Yeah. But I was like, but that's what I say to people now too. Like when you see him, like, dude, this job's not for everybody. You gotta grit your teeth sometimes. And yeah. tomorrow's gonna be one of those days where uh we're gonna have some ice bags on afterwards, I'm sure, and I'll be sipping on some bourbon to ease the ease the bumps and bruises because there's gonna be a few. Yeah. How surreal, going back to the football thing. How well, technically a little bit going back to the football, but it's a wrestling question. How surreal was it for you to be at SummerSlam in a ring with that idiot Pat McAfee? With stupid, <laughs> stupid, stupid Pat McAfee. I love Pat. I love Pat. <laughs> As um, do I. What a dude. He he's on an incredible, you know, monumental rocket ship right now with his career. So he's crushing. But and, but isn't it great? Like it's a you know and we'll. But to watch that guy have that career and like see him do his thing and go like, but he's Pat. Like yeah. he's not. He'll never change. That's no. why he is the enigma that he is because he's never changed. He, he's been successful in so many different things. Football, comedy, his original stuff when he came out and started doing, you know, the podcasts and stuff with Barstools, whatever it is. And now what he's created where he's on ESPN every day. <laughs> 
with his own show and they modified the rules for him yeah. when they're changing the rules for you you you've made it right um and he just does whatever he wants to do mm-hmm. and he's not gonna let anybody tell him no um but no the full circle of that thing man like in all honesty we clicked right when we were both in indie together you know he let me stay with him because uh, i was tired of living in this tiny hotel room um and we, we would always go to the same bar, Howl at the Moon. And, and at the time, I, I wasn't uh, drinking, so I would always be the, the driver. And he had a brand-new Escalade. So I was like, man, I'm driving a sweet Escalade every night. Like, uh, Played a lot of golf together. And then we talked about We knew that this lockout was impending. We're like, well, we both want to be wrestlers. Like, let's go to a wrestling school and learn and become wrestlers while we're locked out if this you know so that if football stays for a whole season or whatever we can we can try to go to wwe and then you fast forward 10 years and i'm facing him in an nfl stadium at SummerSlam, and the dude has a choir you know calling me names what a jerk but (laughs) you know so to go out there and share that yeah was a really kind of cool full circle surreal moment and it was a a great match i think you know the better the better guy lost let's be real i mean i would agree nobody wanted pat to win no cheap punk but (laughs) he wants to pay the ref uh but it was cool dude like you you i wouldn't have thought that that ever would have happened yes if you asked me 10 years ago like my buddy from the colts who i stay in touch with we're gonna wrestle in front of seventy thousand people yeah after we had that one I conversation, just, I we laughed. can wrestle. Yeah, I would have laughed you in the face. Mm-hmm. You know, he says it all the time, my life's not real. Like, I think the same thing a lot of times, dude. Like, yeah. The situations I'm in, I'm like, this is not real. Right. Like, you look around, like, how how, yeah. we, how absurd yeah. is I'm, all of I'm, this? I'm getting speared on top of the Houston Astros dugout in front of 80,000 people. <laughs> at, you know, like, yes, I just took a course. ride in a porter potty, too. Like, I mean, like, that's surreal. Like, yeah. where do you... I never thought that's what I would be getting to do. And I right. get to do that. And it's such a privilege. And it's so awesome. And then, you know, I think it's a privilege to go back to NXT and rebrand myself. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, I wouldn't have thought that. Like, some people, they just go, hey, man, you know, good luck in your future endeavors. And and I got an opportunity to go back and try to rebrand myself. And, you know, that shows that they have faith in what I do and, and faith in me. And they're letting me use my creativity and make something special and i'm you know i two years from now we'd be sitting in your basement looking at all your action figures going dude you just main event wrestlemania how cool yeah. and i'm like i never would have thought that two years ago when i was sitting in your basement getting ready to fight Ilya. yeah yeah how do you uh and it's and it's and it's a sink or swim situation too which obviously has gone very very well for you is it a scary thing though to get before all this to get drafted as a free agent yeah when it's very it's very much like what are you talking about what even is a free yeah agent for sure i yeah. mean you, you start to do some self-doubt yeah at, for sure because you just look at it and you go okay and then you try to justify well brock's a free agent so <laughs> must, be uh, me and brock. must be me and brock <laughs> obviously not the case they had no idea what to do with me yeah and, you know then but i'm also i have no ego in a sense of like when they were like hey would you go to nxt absolutely mm-hmm. like i don't have to think about that like, mm-hmm. yeah do i want to go down there and bet on myself sure let's right. do it how can I because, be a service? Because then I know too, if it comes to an end, like I gave it everything I had. I didn't sit on the sideline and, and let it pass me by. Like I took an opportunity and I ran with it. And I think it's gonna pay off immensely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm main eventing a pay per view tomorrow. Yeah. And you've had big pay per view matches multiple times. And like you said, I mean, this fan base, which is the same fan base that watches the main roster, has like turned around and 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 kind of seen in them, I think us, I should say, seeing what you're doing in NXT, I think it shines this whole new light on what you've been doing this entire time, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I think it, and they're allowing me, you know, I get down there and, and I get to run for 20 minutes in the ring. Yes, where, exactly. Where, yes. And they go, oh man, dude, he's really good in there. Well, yeah. Yeah, duh. <laughs> Come on. You know, I've added some weapons to the arsenal, but it's still the same dude that, that's been cracking skulls for eight years on the main roster like constantly but it's but it's interesting because and i don't think that you think it's gonna go this way because wrestling is wrestling and storytelling is storytelling but i also feel like your character has done things that have upset the audience so much that it gets to a point where no 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 i don't like you yeah i didn't like when you put becky lynch in the end of days yes i didn't want you 
to end Kurt Angle's career. And I'm mad at you. Oh, for sure. You know sure. what I mean? And it's not like a traditional, no. oh, I'm going to go boo there's, the bad guy. It's, I'm mad at you. hate towards me from people, from things I've done. And yeah. like, uh, I mean, that's cool. Like, <laughs> let's be real. When, yeah, they, when they lose their minds when you hit Becky at the end of the day, it's, come on now, that's awesome. It's it's, badass. There's a lot of real angry people. They're still angry. I mean, I still get tweets. I can't believe you did that. Yep. Well, just go watch it, and you'll see. So you do believe. It happens. Um, so, yeah, I think I think that is a good reason for me to be in NXT, too, because it gives that audience a break from me. Mm -hmm. They have not had a break from Baron Corbin in eight years. Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't, you know, we watch guys when they evolve, sometimes they go away for four or five months and come back with a new thing or new character or whatever it is. All of mine were very natural evolutions on television. Mm -hmm. I never, like, went away. Like, the lone wolf shaved his head and put on a vest. That's right. And it was, I was bought out by the McMahons. Right. So it made sense. And then you take that and you take the constable and he enters the King of the Ring tournament and he wins it. Okay. So now that's a natural evolution. And then the King loses his crown and loses everything else. Natural, correct. Um, you know, natural direction. Then wins it all back in Vegas. Like it's never been a thing of like, go away for eight months, we'll repackage you and here you are. Like that's difficult to do. Mm -hmm. And then I think this progression I've gone on, I mean, we, we went to a, a place where they burned bodies and we burned all my old gear and the crown and all of those things is a natural progression of like, look, I've done these things, but let's forget all that and let's rock and roll with, with who I am. You know, it's interesting because while the Raw audience, the SmackDown audience has had a break from Baron Corbin, if you look at the landscape, as fast as WWE has moved, and, and this period of time has been such an incredibly hot period of time for WWE, and just in terms of quality across all three ba Absolutely. brands, it's just been so good, right? That everything's kind of different from when you left, yeah. you know? I mean, the fact that Cody is where Cody is and Roman is where Roman is, but at the same time, Seth is is a world champion. Jey Uso is a legit main event guy. Yeah. Randy Orton's back. CM Punk yes, is we, back. We know you love that. And, wow, love you it. listen to the show. Yeah, dude. I just see your tweets every two minutes about it. Yeah, dude. I think that's what's exciting is I'll have a bunch of new people to kind of run with when yes. I go back up. It can be the Uso. It can be Punk. It can be whoever. Yes. And it will feel fresh and new. And and there's been a lot of new people that have kind of come up and, you know, they're trying to make a name for themselves. I mean, LA Knight has become the hottest thing, right? Dude, it's wild, right? Yeah. I mean, just... just overnight became fire yeah and you grayson waller's killing it up there killing right now. It. like so you got a lot of guys and then you're gonna see i'm sure you'll see nxt guys coming up you know over the next five six months that yeah. that will be successful and so when i go back I, one i'm excited to see what the reaction be like what if it's a rumble what if it's after rumble who knows when it'll be but when the first time my music hits I, i'm curious to see how if if the reaction from nxt will correlate or will there be some people that just boo me because that's what they remember. But I think we have a lot of new audience members too. So yes. I think that, you know, they'll know who I am and they'll, I'll get that nostalgia. And then also like the new people like, well, this dude's kind of cool. I'm a cheer for him. Like it could be something crazy like that. They don't remember me pouring dog food again on Roman's head. Uh, right. You know, right. or changing the rules in the match with Finn Balor. And when I was constable, I changed the rules like four times and kept losing. <laughs> Hilarious. But, the audience was furious. They were furious. That goes back to the thing we were talking about before. This isn't normal bad yeah. guy stuff. They're really mad at you. But going back to that point, Roman Reigns is a different beast. Finn yeah. Balor is a different yeah. person. The like judgment every is crushing. Dude, I mean, look what Dom Dominic is. I mean, like you just. I was like Dom's like second match. Like Seth worked with him first, and then I was like his second match, and he was just this, you know, baby face, scrawny. Yeah. You know, dude, and now he's you know he's been to prison. He's got an iPad. <laughs> like, and who? Dude, he's you, making people crazy. You talked about the pandemic era when you're on every show, like yeah. you know, every segment, just getting reactions from people. Who's the guy who's on every show right now? Dom, baby. Dom. He's crushing it. And he's crushing it. He's the best. Like, he's just come into his own. Yes. I mean, I see you have your Judgment Day colors on the wall. Of Full course. On Judgment Day guy. I mean, the whole group. And like, what's cool about that group, too, is like you see a lot of times a group will have a leader, and that's kind of the only person you really know. Like, mm -hmm. everybody in that group has created their own yep. image. Yep. They all are individuals in that group. 
in a sense. And so they all get their reactions. They all have their stories. I mean, from Priest to Finn to, to you know, Rhea and to Dom. They, the in if they separated tomorrow, they're all top level stars. Absolutely. And like, I mean, Dom is just, it's just a, such a wild story because that dude has become a big star. Like yes. when he shows up, it's like you showing up at NXT, there's a big star here from the main yeah. run. Dom shows up, he's a big star, and he's like, the antithesis, he has nothing to do with his dad. Nobody even calls him Dominic Mysterio. It it's goes just back Dom. to me saying, find your own path. Right. And he's done it. Right. Right. You had to go to jail. A little bit of jail time might be good jail for you. I worked in a jail, man. Sometimes some little <laughs> soft babies need to come in and, and toughen up. Did and you, he, you worked in a jail? I did. Woo. In college. In juvenile detention, medium max security prison, uh, mental institution. Wild place, bro. Wow. You've seen wow. some stuff. I got some stories, bro. Not appropriate yeah. for this. But, uh, you know, so Dom went in and toughened up. He yeah. Probably, he probably had to hold somebody's pocket for a few days. And then, you know, he <laughs> broke away. He learned to make a shiv and... <laughs> Yeah. Started taking people's dinner rolls. That's right. All over the course of about six hours. Yeah. 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 How has it been? I mean, being in NXT and and working with Shawn Michaels, like, what is it like? Because you, you got to uh, work in NXT under both Triple H and Shawn Michaels. You got to pick the brain of, of Triple H and, and watch this guy work. Now you're in NXT. You get to watch Shawn. What is it like to kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, be inside that wrestling brain Dude, of Shawn? I mean... Yes, when I came up, like, you know, Triple H had a, a lot to do with me in NXT the first run and, like, learning from him, obviously, uh -huh. you know, to my opinion, one of the greatest heels of all time as well because uh -huh. he could play, you know, this cowardly guy, but he was also going to crack you in the teeth. Like, he, his range was amazing in what he did. So, I, you know, having him, but then now going back and getting a different philosophy from, we, we've said it a few times on this podcast, but, like, one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time, mm -hmm. uh, getting to be around him, not only pick his frame, brain, but his excitement, dude. Like mm -hmm. him revving me up before I went out for that promo. And like, it just, it puts you in this mode. And you're like, dude, that's Shawn Michaels being like, go get it, go take what's yours. And you're like, dude, what? And then he believes in everything I do. Like I, I got asked probably, I want to say like a year and a half ago, um, and I was going to work with Drew to WrestleMania, but someone had asked, Shawn Michaels wanted me to come down and do a couple of shows at NXT because he wanted a big heel to do it. But I couldn't go because it was building to Drew. It wasn't on me. Somebody else made that call. But um, I was kind of bummed because I was like, I really want to go and learn from Shawn. And now being there, dude, it's just his excitement for the show and the people on the show and the creativity behind the show and his passion to make that show. And we always say it's not a developmental system anymore, but it is a third brand. I mean, it pulled a million viewers, you know, a couple of months back with Becky and, and, you know, we were pulling 900 that, that match I had with Carmelo pulled 900 and something thousand viewers. Seth pulled 900 and something thousand viewers. Like, it has taken a show to an, another level, and it's because of Sean and the guys behind him and the coaches and the PC. But when you have, like I said, Sean Michaels, you know, giving me the, you know, shake like he's grabbing me and shaking me, like close it down, go do you, go get yours, like, hey, and he's told me before too, because like you know when I was doing a promo with somebody that will remain unnamed, uh, he said, hey, if they can't keep up, run them over, and I go plan to, like. You know what I'm saying? That's he right. wants the best out there, and he and he's driving people to be the best out there. And, and he's been the best. He understands that. That's why you go all right, You're right? Like, it's not somebody else telling you, hey, you know, you need to go do this. It's literally the greatest of all time saying, "Go get it." Yeah, something I think that people don't fully appreciate about NXT and where it's at is not just that it's doing well in the ratings or the fact that you guys are selling tickets for these premium live events. It's that, to me, NXT didn't start from nothing. It started from a deficit. It started from below yeah. nothing. Because when you look at, at 2.0, which this thing that is NXT now started with NXT 2.0, black and gold was taken away from people. Yeah. So it's not like you were starting from scratch. You were actually starting from, we've taken away something you love. Yes. And now we're starting from scratch, which is yes. less than scratch. And they've brought it to a place where it's, like you just said, it has come back to being 
this third brand, this television yeah. show that just signed a huge TV deal on its own station yeah. with its own Wild, platform. Right? Wild. Like, I don't think people can are fully wrapping their head around what a yeah. what a giant thing has happened down there. Yeah, it's insane. And like his philosophy, like Sean is like, we're gonna move fast. Yeah. And like, that's why I knew too, when I started working, I was like, I gotta get my cardio. So then that's kind of how I fell back into jujitsu because like, I started boxing at like a boxing gym. And I was like, oh man, I wanna get in jujitsu again. Da, 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 da. And I was mountain biking. I was riding the, my wife's Peloton. I was doing all these things to get my cardio to the next level because not only is it faster in the ring, but the whole show feels faster. Mm -hmm. And they do a great job of getting all these people on the show. There's so many different people on yep. every show. And it never stalls. And I think that's why people love that show because it moves. And when you watch it, you know, you're not, there's not a point where you're like, okay, I'm going to change the channel for a few minutes. I'll come back to it. But because, because you're like, if I change the channel, I could miss some awesome stuff. Yes. And it's not just because I've seen wrestling shows try to get everybody on the show yeah. just to get everybody on the show. And that's useless. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Yeah. It's like NXT is getting everybody on the show with a reason for being on the show. Yes. Like, okay, we don't have a match for Chase University. What if we had this whole thing with like... Which is so good. It's great. And all said, of a I sudden... I need to teach him how to play poker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but you're like, all of a sudden, you're like, yeah, I don't want to miss the Chase U vignette. Yeah. And when you're like, I don't want to miss the vignette or the match or the whatever, I feel like you're in a good spot, man. And I feel like uh, I feel like you're in a good spot. But I also think with that show too, like not only is it moving fast, there's something for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, tomorrow night, Ilya and I are going to beat the brakes off each other. I'm going to be limping at the Chiefs game on Sunday, I'm sure. I mean, I'm gonna, Travis Kelsey's having me out, sitting in his box. I'm like, T-Swift, what's up? Sorry, I got a limp. Black eye. Maybe I'm bleeding from my lip. I'm not yeah. that. I'm, I know. Just deal with it, lady. Just a badass yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah T-Swift. No problem. No problem. Um, fist bump. We'll make up a handshake. <laughs> Your man just scored a touchdown. Let's go, Chiefs. Uh, it's going to be sick. But it's got everything because it's got, the, it's got comedy. It's got physicality. It's got high flyers, you know, and then these women that are on NXT are pumping out some of the best quality matches. Like I'm looking forward to seeing some of these women on the main roster to run with the Charlottes, to run with the Beckys. I mean, look, Becky's already putting on clinics with some of these, these girls yep. in NXT and you get Bianca in the mix. You're going to have Rhea in the mix. Like all these people, it's going to be awesome, dude. And the and growth, like, the fact that we can watch the growth, right? Like the fact that you can see like somebody like a Kiana James or whatever, yeah. right? Like, Go like, oh yeah, she's still learning. Oh yeah, she's still getting the hang of it. And then all of a sudden, you stop looking, and then you turn around, and she's having these PLE matches that are like Dude, sick. Yeah, it's and and it becomes I hate to use Seamus's word, but banger, banger, bro. What an banger. idiot. Seamus, <laughs> you're an idiot. Um, yeah, and it, but there's a lot of people like that, man. Yes, there's and there's people who fly under the Joe Coffey to me. I think is awesome, phenomenal. Oh, love him. I love watching him go, dude. And then Briggs, well, the other night his match with Mello, dude. That dude tore it up, throwing a moon salt. He's like, you know, six seven, two hundred sixty five mm -hmm. pounds. I was like, I could do it, but I would hurt myself landing because I'm, you know, I'm just not there anymore. I was, used to do moon salts when Bill was there. Practice him in the ring. He's like, you're not doing that because you're not going to do it every night. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, <laughs> then, I'll, then I won't. Cool. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> but he's throwing moonsaults at his size. And it, like the Creed brothers, like the things they were doing. And now like they were crushing it there. And now they're crushing on the main roster. Like there's so much talent there. And it's just what a show, dude. Yeah. Well, look, man, I'm super glad you came by. Everybody needs to watch NXT. Yes. Obviously. Uh, watch me win it title tomorrow night yeah watch you win the, well by the time this comes out they will have watched it oh. and you'll be the world champion yes! i'll be able to tell everybody guess who's on the show the nxt yes. champion of the yes. world That's baron right. corbin we never thought we'd hear that no i never won it when i was there the first time no so i need it now no yeah that's one title in like nine years yeah we had that crown too oh baby i did and the money in the bank that money just didn't work out real well no nah, it didn't work out great Gender, you bastard. Uh, but we also get coffee, right? Do we want to plug the coffee? I mean, if yeah, if you want amazing coffee, I'm roasting it myself. That's why bagging it myself, shipping it myself, openaircoffee.co. Uh it's on my gram, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, check it out. It you can subscribe to it, you can buy a bag, whatever it is. The philosophy is feed your soul, get outside and breathe, baby. I love coffee. And it's so good too. Yeah. I really take a lot of pride in where I buy the green from. 
because uh, you know you can get them from different farms all over the world buying high quality stuff, roasting it, rocking and rolling. Yeah, we well, make your money beating people up, so you can take your time yeah. getting the good stuff as far as coffee goes. Absolutely, it's perfect. Yeah, got to sip sip away the pain some days, and <laughs> can't always be booze. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be good for you. Yeah, tequila and <laughs> bourbon are not good for my diet. Oh uh, well, thank you, man. It's been great. Yes, thank you.